Firstly, we will start this session with an introduction, then we will move forward. So today we have with us Ranga Jagannathan, Senior, Exec Senior Director of Agora, a leading video voice and live interacting streaming platform. Agora has been making significant transformation in the landscape of artificial intelligence through its services. So, sir, we are very grateful that you gave our time. And today, in this exclusive interaction, we will delve deeper into Agora's offerings and get insights about artificial intelligence and its upcoming trends. Thank you so much, Poonam. Looking forward. Thanks, sir. So, firstly, I would, to, I would like to ask, how do you perceive the current landscape of artificial intelligence in 2023? And what significant trends do you anticipate in the upcoming years? Um, so there are actually several that come to my mind, but I'll just stick to maybe three or four of them. Uh, the first one that comes to mind is uh, something around deep uh, learning and neural networks. Uh, there's a lot of uh, research, there's a lot of effort that's going on or that has gone in into deep learning and neural networks. The second trend that I can uh, think of that's probably not making as much waves, but I'm sure there are uh, there is a lot of uh, research and work going on, and that's in healthcare. So um, we can get into details of that separately, but that's another trend that I've seen uh, around AI in healthcare in 2023. And if I were to talk specifically from the domain that uh, I have a little more expertise. I would say things like uh, AI for uh, software-based noise suppression. Uh, there, there are NLP models for real-time translation and transcriptions of conversations. Uh, there are things that can be done with AI for uh, generating content in real conversations itself. Uh, so to kind of make uh, the human-machine interactions a lot more natural. And of course, uh, in some domains, there's also a lot of work that's happened using AI for uh, spatial audio, uh, because audio lends itself uh, to some of these things. So I think these are some of the trends that I have seen. Uh, again, uh, th these are some of the positives. Uh, if I were to talk, touch upon something that may not be uh, the best outcome for AI is obviously around deep fake, but uh, we can probably park that for a later part of the discussion. So these are some of the trends that I have seen for 2023. Uh, you asked me uh, what can be done or what I foresee in 2024. Um, some of the things that, uh, at least from our perspective, is we have started using a lot of AI in our products and services to make live interactive conversations extremely rich and high quality. So AI helps us a lot in uh, that aspect. There are a lot of uh, things that are happening in the human and workspace collaboration space that we are seeing and that we have seen a little bit of from what uh, Microsoft and others have done. But that's another trend that uh, we think will pick up in 2024. And uh, specifically coming back to what and where we see ourselves, I think a lot of effort will be on AI to help us in entertainment, media, and of course, in healthcare. So long answer to your question, but these are some of the things that come top of mind. Thank you, sir. That was very brief answer. And I hope, hope it is very informative as you talked about the positive aspects. And you also talked about some deep fake that is negative about artificial intelligence. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So, sir, we are seeing a significant rise of Gen AI, particularly when we see popularity of ChatGPT, Bard, and these kind of AI tools. How do you see it influencing the industries? And I would also like to know how Agora perceives the impact of generative AI on various sectors. Uh, sure. Uh, so, as with any technology, there is, uh, first of all, there is, uh, I would say, there are two or three different phases that uh, new technologies go through. One is denial, then there is acceptance, and then, of course, there is normalization uh, of the technology itself in our day-to-day -day lives. So uh, I think there has been enough said and written about what Gen AI can take over from humans 
and what will remain. So I won't get too deep into that because that's already out there for most people to already see the impact and the effects and the benefits of that. Um, where we see in our context, where we see a lot of use for generative AI is, I, I can give you an example. So for example, in a conversation that could be happening with uh, educators and with students, there could be a need for the transcription to be made available in real time for engines to understand who is participating, what are they saying, what is the tone, what is the tonality of that conversation, how effective uh, the teacher's conversation is. So that's one example. The other example is in the case of e-commerce, if somebody is trying to sell something live, then are the audiences engaged or not? Or is the person that's selling the product actually being able to convince people or not? So there are a lot of conversations that happen, but how do you make sense of it? So these are areas that, these are some of the areas where we see AI playing a role. Apart from what we have seen in some context recently with uh, the World Cup, as well as with IPL earlier this year, where you had um, where you had experts that were holographically transported from uh, remote locations to the studios or to the stadium. So uh, these are some of the applications that are adjacent to what we do. And we are extremely excited about the possibilities with AI. In AI, my question was, what challenges do you foresee for various sectors in India when it comes to adopting generative AI? And how oh. these challenges can be overcome? Sure. So uh, again, uh, as with advantages, there are a few challenges and disadvantages. So mostly challenges, I would say not disadvantages. Uh, some of them that come to mind are around data privacy because AI by its very nature requires very large sets of data and uh, some of it could be personal information as well. So how do you protect um, this data? So what are the uh, what are the policies that you have as organizations, as governments or as individuals around data privacy? So that's one challenge that the industry will have to collectively work towards. The other one is around ethical use and issues. Deep fake is a great example of that. So how do you protect and prevent uh, such kind of use, uh, which could be harmful to people and their reputations? So that's the other one. The third one is interoperability. So while I might develop a, a platform that's AI based, how will it operate with a different platform which could benefit from this. So an example could be, are medical devices going to be seamlessly interoperable? Are IoT devices going to be seamlessly interoperable? Um, are just platforms, software platforms going to be seamlessly interoperable? So these are some of the uh, challenges that I see um, as, a, as a segment that's kind of growing. I don't have an answer or a magic wand to say what will solve I think it's going to be a combination of regulation. It's going to be a combination of uh, self-governance. Uh, it's going to be uh, checks and balances that organizations themselves put in place. Uh, and of course, I think it will also be a combination of uh, how people are exposed to these tools and what tools are made available for them to use this. So it's uh, as we speak, it's an evolving space, uh, very fluid. Only time will tell uh, which one of these will get uh, handled, how and how soon. Mm -hmm. sure. So how is AI transforming customer services and business operations? And what value can users expect from these innovations? Uh, sure. Uh, uh, sure. Uh, again, a lot of... Uh, a lot of what I'm going to say might sound technical, but uh, rest assured that all of these drive significant business outcomes for our customers and prospects. So starting with something as simple as being able to uh, just have a seamless audio and video conversation with poor or sluggish networks and devices. Now, how do you handle that? That itself is a big challenge. And uh, Agora has invested extremely heavily on 
making sure that our network is robust enough to handle these situations. Uh, we call it software-defined real-time network. There are various components that are part of the uh, software-defined real-time network, SDRTN, as we call it. Uh, some of them include uh, AI-based noise suppression. For example, not everyone may have access to very high-end uh, devices that can suppress noise. But should that be a roadblock for seamless experiences? We feel no. And that's why we have what's called as AI-based noise suppression, which is, again, software-driven. And it can cut out a majority of common noises and sounds that we hear uh, in our environments every day. So that's an example of AI-driven uh, innovation from Agora. Another one is real-time transcription and translation, where we can transcribe and translate between languages in real time. Another one could be 3D spatial audio, where for gaming experiences and metaverse kind of experiences, uh, these technologies are extremely useful for you to be able to figure out who is at what point in a given situation or a room or a virtual environment. Uh, then, of course, there is the quality of experience and service that I briefly spoke about. And how do you manage this at scale? So currently, we power almost more than 60 billion minutes of live interactive voice and video worldwide. Now, all this can't be done manually or it cannot be monitored manually. So there's a lot of AI that's um, under the hood that takes care of all these optimizations. So these are some of the things that uh, Agora does, which is kind of under the hood. But like I said, it drives extremely high and significant business outcomes for our customers and prospects. So how does Agora, through its software-defined real-time network, leverage AI to manage voice and video to provide uninterrupted streaming experience to its users? Uh, yeah, so like I briefly mentioned, it's extremely important for a platform like Agora to be able to adjust itself uh, to varying degrees of either hardware or network conditions. For example, if I am on a poor network, uh, you should still be able to hear me till the network actually completely dies down. So how do you optimize for that? And that's where uh, one of the components of SDRTN comes in, which optimizes the entire audio and video uh, packets to make sure that we control automatically through AI, either the packet loss or jitters or any other variables that are there as part of that whole audio video stream, we take care of it using different AI based technologies that we have implemented in that network itself. Uh, the other one which I mentioned, for example, is again noise suppression, uh, because not everyone may have access to high end um, uh, devices that can suppress noise. So that's another area that uh, we have uh, invested a lot of time, effort and money in. And like I said, how do you allocate bandwidth smartly to devices and networks that actually require it? How do you make sure that if there is traffic in one particular geography, how do you make sure that you auto scale your resources in that geography and limit your resources in another geography? So all these are AI based decisions that the network takes care of. Okay. Lastly, I would like to ask, when we look ahead in 2024, we anticipate that we are going to see transformational changes in AI landscape. So how is Agora positioned to stay ahead at the foremost of these developments? Sure. So, um, for example, we have very recently um, launched a pilot SDK, uh, which uses the ability to generate content using AI. An example of that would be, let's say, for example, if you are in a um, if you're in a classroom and you have a question that you'd like to ask to the teacher, and the teacher is probably not available to answer you in real time, it can the same information can be fed to the AI engine, which will generate content and communicate back with the student and it would be extremely seamless to the student, whether the teacher or the teaching assistant or uh, uh, an artificial artificial intelligent robot has 
responded to it. But it looked extremely seamless and real time and real life um, to the participants or the students. So that's an example. So these are some of the areas that we are uh, putting a lot of effort in trying to see how we can integrate uh, AI based content generation tools to make experiences better. The other one is, for, to give you an example, is there are a lot of handsets that may not be very high end. However, the experience that a customer expects or an end user expects is very high. So in this context, we actually have technology that takes a low, low quality stream and converts it into a higher quality stream on the uh, device itself. So uh, without, uh, sorry, on the network itself, not on the device, but on the network itself. And it presents itself in a manner that the hardware resources are not consumed any more than what is required. So even for low end devices and low network conditions, we are able to give an extremely high quality experience to our uh, customers and their end users. So these are just some of the examples that I mentioned, there are a lot more that we are working on. Some of it is uh, probably a little too early to speak about, but uh, these are some of uh, the things which I can share. Another one that I can probably share is the ability to gamify certain experiences. So if you are having a conversation amongst a social group, how can you gamify that experience by uh, putting uh, elements in that conversation, which are AI driven and AI based. So those are the things which we are also working towards and we already have some examples of that. Um, the last one that I can think of, uh, at least from this perspective is, for example, AI based proctoring in um, education, where you have to deliver a test or examination to a lot of participants and how do you ensure that there is no malpractice happening. So AI comes in there. Uh, through the proctoring use case and uh, the proctoring capability. And that's another area that uh, we help in. Uh, and um, telehealth, uh, a lot of things that are structured around virtual healthcare. So a lot of these components require, uh, in some situations, AI-based uh, decisions to be made. And that's where we come in. These are some examples that I can think about.